Uh, hello guys, welcome back. My name is Andrei. In this video, I'll talk about uh, integration between VA8 database and uh, Llama index. Um, this is based on the source code and uh, URL you'll find below the video, uh, URL to my GitHub, to this um, sample application where integration is implemented. And what I'll do today, sort of like a tutorial, I'll walk through the source code and I'll explain the most important bits uh, so that it will be easier for you to grab the source code, run it on your environment, test it out, and hopefully apply the same for your own use cases. So let's start. So first of all, uh, let's look into the requirements txt. This is the file where we list uh, libraries that are installed uh, for this sample application. One of them, VAV8 client. Uh, this library is required if you want to talk to the VAV8 uh, database instance from your application. Uh, by the way, uh, VAV8 provides uh, multiple options uh, how you could run your database instance either uh, on cloud or locally. So myself, I'm using local instance, uh, which runs on a local <coughs> Docker container. And this is because my uh, use case and my requirements are to build a RAC application, which runs uh, locally, independently from any cloud vendor. So uh, with VAV8, that's possible, and it runs out of the box in Docker, which is great, uh, because I don't like the idea to store uh, embeddings or uh, vectors uh, on the file system, and out of the box with VAV8, we can store them inside the um, inside the Docker environment, uh, and uh, uh, yeah, it's easier to manage it this way, and I believe it's easier to scale well when your application grows. Okay, so that's about requirements, and obviously we have Llama index installed, and there's a long chain. Uh, we're using some helper functions for from long chain to generate embeddings. Okay, uh, so this is it, and then we got configuration file, and here we point to the localhost 8 port 8080. This is where uh, Docker container with VAV8 instance runs. Then we need to provide uh, index name, in this case Sparrow, and VAV8 will use this index name to store the, the vector collection with our documents. And later, using this name, we'll fetch uh, the vectors uh, during the inference time. So during ingest time, we'll use the vector store the vectors under this index name, and later during um, inference time, we'll use the same index name to fetch the vectors and uh, to send them to the LL LLM uh, for processing to answer the query which was uh, asked by the user. Uh, okay, so that's it. And then we got Docker Compose. If you go to the VAV8 website, uh, there you, you have a very nice configurator uh, where you can enter the details, uh, what kind of a use case uh, you want to run, uh, either with uh, out-of-the-box embeddings from VAV8 or not, and then you will get uh, Docker Compose file generated, and you can just uh, run it on your own environment with uh, Docker Compose uh, uh, up minus D, for example, uh, to be detachable, and then the instance uh, would run, and you can access it from your application uh, with VAV8 client. So that's, that's it. Uh, so we can close it up, and now we have uh, so we have mainly two uh, parts, uh, two important uh, steps. So first one is ingest, and then inference. So during ingest, what happens is that we read um, uh, documents. Let's say. Uh, invoice PDF, like in this case, and then we translate uh, the data, the text data from uh, from this PDF into the vectors, and vectors are stored in VAV8 database. And uh, I think it's a good uh, uh, VAV8 have very good potential, and they support also now I think uh, multi-model search, and they support uh, various use cases. And uh, I think it's a good uh, platform to develop your. Uh, applications with the vector search uh, because the VAV8 seems very well supported and uh, uh, development relations are great and uh, especially comparing with competitors with other vector databases so I think this was one of the reasons also why I decided to go with uh, uh, VAV8. Obviously it's technically it's also strong but uh, I like that uh, it have this strong community as well so that I think this is important uh, uh, going forward. Okay so let's look into the pipe pipeline for ingest. Uh, 
so the first step we did some configuration properties. Then we using uh, VV8 library, VV8 client that we saw in the requirements before few 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 seconds ago, and we instantiate the client uh, with the URL. So now we got the client. Then we load documents, and this is done with Llama index helper library. Then uh, we load embedding model, and we're using local embeddings here uh, from the sentence transformers. So just the local embeddings, not some embeddings from the cloud API. Everything is local. And then uh, as last step uh, in this pipeline, we build index. So we pass client embeddings and documents, and then we get back the index. And as soon as this index is generated, then it's automatically been stored in the VV8 uh, vector store. So we don't need to uh, explicitly save anything. It's being uh, saved uh, just automatically. So uh, if you look in those functions, they're quite uh, straightforward because the API is great. So we don't have we don't have to have uh, long implementation, complex implementation. So for load documents we're using a uh, simple directory reader. This is from, uh, from Llama index. And for example, we tell to read only PDF files. So we get the documents, then we load local embeddings through long chain embeddings wrapper. Uh, and then we pass those embeddings to the Llama index. And this in, inside build index, this is where uh, VV8 uh, database come to the play. So we have VV8 client and we, uh, we from the Llama index, uh, uh, we're using wrapper uh, for the VV8 vector store to communicate from Llama index to the VV8 uh, because this vector, vector database is automatically supported by Llama index. Here we pass the client and we pass the index name, like I mentioned before, so that uh, all the vectors uh, in this collection will be stored under this index name, so it will be easier for us to retrieve, or not easier, it will be just possible for us to retrieve those vectors later during inference time. So we get the vector store, and then uh, we initialize the storage context, and then we build the index here. So from documents, from service context, and storage context. And storage context uh, contains the pointer to uh, to the vector store, and service context is initialized with our uh, uh, local embeddings. And LLM is none in this case because it's not the inference; it just uh, we generate the uh, vectors for the data that was extracted from uh, from the, for the array of text which was extracted from PDF, and and then as soon as this uh, step is done, then it automatically data is stored uh, inside the VAV8. And if you go to uh, let's go over here. Uh, to the Docker desktop, and we see that container for VV8 is running. And if you go under the volumes, so this is where actual data is being stored. If you go into the volume, we see uh, for the Sparrow, uh, there are some internal in the internal format the data is being stored. So this means once I execute the ingest step, then data was successfully saved inside the container. So this uh, this is how you can do as well. After you run ingest uh, on your own environment, you could go to the Docker desktop, for example, to the volumes, open the volume for uh, which is associated with VAV8, and uh, you should see <coughs> uh, some entries with uh, your index, uh, they should be available. Okay, uh, so that's ingest, and the next step is inference. <coughs> for this simple example, I have the, just a main script where I call build rack pipeline uh, function, and inside this function, uh, what we do, we also, uh, because it's a separate step, we again connect to the VAV8 because it's a separate execution, and uh, we get, uh, obtain the client, and then over here we build index again, uh, because we need to restore the index from the vector, um, from the vector stored inside the VAV8. And we, if we go to the uh, build index function, what we have here is we get VV8 vector store from Llama index. We pass the uh, information about the client and we pass the index name, like we d use the same index uh, in ingest step, so that we fetch now those vectors uh, stored under the same index. We get vector store and we restore index uh, from the vector store and from the service context, and we're using here the same type of embeddings, local embeddings like we used uh, for the ingest, but in this uh, in this time we also pass LLM. Uh, 
So the, uh, during inference, we'll use LLM to answer the questions. And uh, LLM, in our case, is also local and is loaded through OLAMA. Right, so this is, uh, to summarize the implementation, I try to go step by step from through all the important points so that it would be easier for you to understand and to reproduce this application on your local environment. And now, <clears throat> just to show you how it works, so this is the sample invoice document, and then I, if I run the query, uh, like to retrieve certain key uh, fields from, from, from the document, then uh, this is the answer. I would get this nice uh, JSON structure, and this kind of JSON uh, is coming uh, because we're using Llama index with some option to uh, tell LLM to return certain structure uh, through the Padetni class, and more importantly, uh, this kind of answer was produced. It was able to uh, we were able to produce this answer because we're using Starlink LLM uh, model, which is capable to answer this kind of questions. Uh, and I'll talk more about JSON output in my future video. So stay tuned and uh, see you next time, and hopefully this was useful. So uh, see you.